Hello, in this session we will basically talk about two things. One is V-ray exposure control and second is depth of field. So it is a tricky uh, concept for artists who are not familiar with photography to understand exposure control. So we'll move on to 3ds Max and if you go to uh, the environment and effects or you can directly pick exposure control here you would find something like this V-ray exposure control and you have some parameters which are not very familiar and which is a little confusing for guys who don't have much idea about photography and these are the exact terms that we would use on photography or manual photography F number, shutter speed, ISO, white balance so we would try to uh, think about these uh, in a photographic term then come and apply this on 3ds Max the first thing we'll talk about is F number okay so what uh, and before that what exposure control basically can do it in in a camera we have couple of controls like shutter speed and aperture we basically control the amount of light which enters into the camera and that uh, subsequently we decide how bright or the dark the image should be or based on the situations uh, like amount of light is available we will control these parameters to get the the correct results or we were, we, the, this, is, this is the control that a photographer has uh, has on the images that he is clicking. So the same control is available in 3ds Max as we can treat the these uh, renders as photographs and we can fine tune those renders using these exposure control values. So uh, the first thing is F number. What is really is F number? In terms of photography, F number is basically how big is your opening in the lens so basically F number uh, uh, gives an idea that what kind of uh, shutter size or how big is your opening or how much light is entering uh, the bigger the opening is higher the amount of light that enters to your camera to a particular time that we are opening it so uh, you can see F numbers higher it is inversely proportional so uh, higher uh, higher the value is lower the opening is and lower the value the higher the opening is so the f2 is something like the the lens is completely open and when you're going to f2.846 you can see that the opening in the lens is going smaller and smaller that means the amount of light enters into the uh, into the sensor or the film will be less the same thing applies here in 3ds max if i have a very higher f number something like 20 or 22 uh, what I would get is a fairly darker uh, image where I have le very less illumination that I can see I can see a very dark image so same way if I have a value like 2 so uh, which which increases the brightness and I have fairly brighter image and the this is not, not only one attribute which can control the amount of light there is an another uh, parameter here called shutter speed shutter speed is how fast or how long you are opening the lens uh, or how long you're exposing the film or the sensor so ex uh, shutter speed is no normally told at 1 by hundredth of a second 1 by 200 a second so that is a fraction of a second or that is a time my lens is opened uh, or open for the light to enter inside the camera so these are the two parameters which I can control the amount of light that enters to my camera I may either control with shutter speed or with the F number so but both has little difference uh, when you're controlling so we would come to that but as of now shutter speed and aperture are two parameters you can control the amount of light which enters to your camera lens here it's basically if I um, lower these values like brighter my images are if I'm lowering these values both will make my image brighter so F number makes it brighter because I'm just saying that my lens opening is bigger and uh, shutter speed uh, reducing it makes it image brighter because I'm telling uh, telling that l let me open my lens for 1 by 20 of the second or if I'm increasing I'm saying that I'm let me open my lens for 1 by 200 of the second so it is fairly l l lesser time so image will be darker so lowering these both values what you're getting is a brighter image so we would uh, look for something uh, which is decently uh, lit 
so I may say 150 okay and there is one more parameter ISO which also has the similar job so what ISO does is I have some examples here uh, this is uh, this is for F number as we have seen uh, and and this is for ISO so lower the ISO lesser sensitive uh, the film or the sensor is higher the higher so the brighter the images uh, I mostly work on either on shutter speed and aperture I rarely work on ISO basically it is also it increasing the values makes the image brighter you may choose any of these methods any one of these methods and and there are some significance when you're using these methods I'll be coming when you were talking about uh, depth of field we'll talk more about how it becomes different while using uh, any of these values to increase the brightness of an image so as of now we understand the, all these three you can use it to control the amount of brightness that you can see uh, here in the render okay okay and just to an example here I found a website where you can uh, do it and test it manually where so you can see that F stop that's the F number you can see 2.8 you can see uh, the image is brighter or darker you can see F16 as we told F16 would be a fairly small opening okay so that time the image gets darker and when I increase the opening the image basically you can hear also you have a uh, understanding what's happening so this is what F number is same way I have shutter speed so uh, I have shutter speed 1 by 20 I would say one one second but here you can show uh, see also that the image is blurred image is blurred because when I say that I'm opening the shutter for one second there is a chances of shake when I when I handheld it or if the object is moving there is a chance that I'll get a, a picture which has so if you want to generate uh, more of um, motion blur so what would I do is I will have a very less shutter speed so this is how it become relevant to have change uh, the parameters this way that um, uh, consider I have I have a shutter speed of 1 by 60 and I have an F stop and one more thing if you you can see that when I reduce my f stop you can see the background is getting blurred you can see that my background is blurred and my foreground is focused so and when I increase the shutter speed uh, sorry f number that is uh, I have a fairly uh, sharper image throughout I don't have a shallow depth of field so uh, f number decides one more thing if I'm controlling with f number bigger the opening shallower the depth of field is that um, I can control when I controlling the uh, light using F number and one more thing changes that is the depth of field so I, I now consider I wanted a shallow depth of field what would I do is I would have the F, F stop set into 2.8 and come to shutter speed and make it a higher value so what I get is an image which is the foreground is focused and the background is blurred and the same way uh, consider I want an image which uh, I wanted uh, motion blur to be shown so what I do is I will lower the lower my shutter speed that is maybe one by second uh, one half of a second and say that I will increase my f-stop so I can get a, a image which is properly exposed so controlling this I'm, I'm making sure my image is properly exposed that is not either overexposed or underexposed and another thing which happens along with controlling this is I can decide I wanted a uh, do I want to generate motion blur or do I need to generate depth of field uh, so it's maybe a little confusing at this time so we would uh, come with an example so we'll be a little more understanding and I just need to explain one more term before I'm going ahead with it that is uh, white balance so what is white balance um, so again that you could uh, see on your camera uh, some of these kind of control that white balance even on a mobile camera you would find these controls that there is a button called auto white balance or there is a white balance called uh, maybe cloudy and maybe tungsten there is fluorescent 
so uh, what is it when I when I mostly try to click a picture um, what happens is uh, I may have a certain shade consider an image like this uh, if I have an image like this if I open in Photoshop uh, so uh, you can see that I have a little reddish tint here and I have a corrected version over here so uh, normally we uh, this this is a white balance error when I'm taking a picture and I may be taking this picture with a fluorescent uh, sorry with a tungsten bulb on I have I might have taken this picture with a filament uh, bulb on and the filament bulb has a little little uh, yellowish or orangish tint which made my white which was really white when I was taking a picture right now I would see it in, uh, in a color which is orangish so it is necessary that I should try to do white balance this, this this may be the original picture but when I when I took a picture I got this so I have an option that later in my software I would do post production and try to make it uh, in a correct this these are the white balance adjustment that's available in Photoshop so you can remove the tone tonality which is on the image but you may do it in, in the time of photography or or maybe while rendering so consider uh, I have an option option here based on temperature and I think this is um, another thing that we are familiar with color temperature so uh, we have a chart so which explains color temperature so uh, this is nothing but it explains color temperature based on Kelvin scale so uh, you can see I have a value from thou basically 1800 to 12,000 K so lower the temperature the warmer the image is higher the temperature cooler the images I would put the same temperature values you you would find you can just search for Kelvin colors uh, color temperature chart you can get it in Google anywhere so so based on this I I have an option that I can control the temperature consider I'm going for something like 4500 or maybe 2800 you can see a color here this uh, this warm uh, or any uh, for a yellow orangish color where uh, this is what normally an incandescent or filament bulb will make. So if I am I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, render with some temperature values like this, basically what the software understand is I'm taking this picture uh, with an incandescent light and please cancel that. So it would will not make an yellow orange tint in my image. It would make just the opposite. It was trying to cancel this color by adding more of blue into the image. So uh, the same way, if it, I'm taking it on a cloudy day, what would I do is I would say that basically that I'll say the temperature is around maybe uh, 7,000, which is uh, can just have all the time you can refer this chart this way. So consider a 7,000 is bluish. So basically, a sky blue is somewhere around the sky. So if I put that color here in that, what would I? What would my software would try to do is? it will basically try to cancel that amount of uh, bluishness I had a little amount of bluishness in this image so I'm basically trying to cancel that so if I, I, I have a neutral light I would just basically say it's neutral it's white light which is illuminating but most of the cases we don't have a pure white light most of the lights are either tinted in uh, maybe it is a little yellowish or maybe it is little uh, bluish so the every color every light has a little um, uh, tonality you may able to remove that using this white balance uh, preset and th this is a, uh, it's very interesting that you can give subtle uh, tonal overall tonal effects to your image and you can improve your image if not going to a post production software you can directly do it in uh, this software to giving a little tint you can you can express your f uh, mood uh, by even adjusting a white balance a little so uh, you can see different examples of white balance these are like while tweaking the white balance you made the same image same photograph but if you slightly tweak the white balance from tungsten to cloudy to or different temperatures you would find the same image with different effects these are some random images that I picked from Google so you can try it on your own renders by adjusting the uh, uh, the white balance or temperature values you would get a different effects and it's uh, it's interesting to test out something on our render so we may able to achieve a little uh, tonal difference without losing much quality um, without losing any quality that if we do it in post production we may worry that we may lose something uh, by doing color correction but I can do it inside 3ds max itself so 
it's it's handy mm. so uh, i i've i will find these controls either on an uh, or here on exposure control over here or you could go and pick up the vray camera and the same vray physical camera and the vray physical camera also has the same controls that is white balance shutter speed and the f number